Hi, I'm Christina Reeves, and I'm one of the landscape architects over at Gasper Landscapes. And I'm here today in my garden to show you how to use your new drip irrigation system. We're going to review the components of your system, how to set your timer, how to monitor your plants to make sure they're lush and healthy and watered correctly, and then also hopefully give you a few tips and um, advice on how to best use your new drip irrigation system. The first component of your system is the Y splitter. The Y splitter attaches to your active hose bib and has two connections so that you can run a hose and the timer at the same time. When your drip irrigation system is active, you'll turn the water off to your hose by turning the toggle, not the hose bib. When the toggle is in line, the valve is open and you're, you can use the water. When the valve is crossing or perpendicular, the valve is closed and this side will be shut off. Always keep this toggle in line and the hose bib open. It's really important because otherwise the timer will not be getting any water and there will be no water flowing to your plants on your system. So this is the Agrofin timer that we use here at Gasper. And as we're beginning to set up our automatic timer, it's important to know a couple things. The timer acts as a shutoff valve and regulates what time and for how long the system will run. Because the timer controls the flow of water, the hose bib will need to remain open while the irrigation system is running. When you're using the timer in um, early spring or late fall, it's important to keep an ear out for any early or late frost warnings. Um, the timer does need to come in in frost. It can't freeze. Um, that is the number one reason that we get callbacks uh, for systems that are not working is because timers were left out over the winter or during a hard freeze and it just breaks the interior mechanisms of the timer. So this timer has to come in in the winter um, and during periods of um, frost and extended frost. The pressure regulator adjusts the water pressure coming from the house to ensure full and even flow throughout the drip irrigation system. It also contains a backflow preventer that prevents any water from the irrigation system backing up into the house water supply. The pressure regulator itself can stay out and the um, drip tube that is in the ground can stay out all winter. It's really just the, the timer that needs to come in. One of the first things that we need to do is realize that the timer itself doesn't have an internal clock. So whatever time of day you are setting, the timer is the time of day that um, it's going to run at whatever frequency you set. So uh, for example, it's nine o'clock right now in the morning. And um, so if I set my timer now at nine o'clock, it is going to run every time at 9 a.m. Now, I do recommend that you do try to set your timer in the morning. The morning is the best time to water your plants. Um, when you water in the evening or at night, um, you tend to get a lot more fungal diseases on plants. Um, and plants just aren't as healthy. So again, try to set your timer in the morning and your plants will thank you for it. In order to set the timer, you're gonna start with all of the three buttons set to reset, reset, and off. Um, this is frequency dial. It's important to know that this is, the numbers on this dial are in hours, not minutes. So for example, if you set it to the one, which it's highly unlikely you would do that, the system is going to water every hour. So that, at a frequency of every hour. So if you want it to water every day, we're gonna be watering every 24 hours, not every hour. 
For most settings, we're going to be wanting to water every other day, so we're probably going to use this 48 hour setting. So in order to set the timer, you're simply going to uh, move the dial to the amount of time that you are, and then you're going to wait for the automatic light to do a, a steady blink there. The runtime is similar, but it is in minutes. You can schedule your timer to run anywhere from three to 120 minutes, uh, two hours. We're probably gonna stay anywhere between 30 and 60 minutes for a typical landscape application. One of the nice things about this timer is that it does have the ability to delay watering without messing up your schedule if we have a lot of rain. So if we have a solid week of rain or multiple days with a lot of heavy, heavy rain, we're going to want to set this system on a rain delay. And the easiest way to do that is using this rain delay dial up here at the top. So simply what you do is decide how long you want to delay your system from running. You can delay it up to uh, one day or 24 hours, 48 hours or two days, three days, 72 hours. And you simply do that by um, turning the dial. So I'm going to turn it to 48. Your manual light is going to blink and then it actually continues to blink for the entire time that the timer is on a rain delay. So when you see this manual light blinking, you will know that um, your rain delay is still active. Now, after that 48 hours, it's just going to go back to its normal schedule and this manual light is going to come off. You don't need to come out after two days and take it off the rain delay. It's going to automatically do that for you. If you want to stop it or stop the rain delay, and get back to your normal things, you just press reset and it will go ahead and reset. As you can see, the manual light has gone off. The timer has a feature that allows you to manually turn on your system. You can use this, for example, if you need to test the system is working, or maybe it is a really hot day and you just want to add some supplemental water to your garden. So you can manual water anywhere from three to 90 minutes. And you simply do that by turning the dial to the desired minutes. So I'm going to set the dial to manually water for five minutes. The manual light again is going to blink steady and then I don't know if you heard it, there was a click there. You can actually hear the valve uh, inside the timer opening and allowing the water to come through from your hose bib, which is why this hose bib always needs to be open. Um, for the duration of the five minutes that you're manually watering, this manual light is going to continue to blink. Again, when that five minutes is over, the manual light will turn off and it will resume its normal schedule of watering. So there's no need to come back and reset it at that point. It just automatically goes back to its normal schedule. You need to take your timer in before we get a hard frost in the fall and after uh, any chance of frost in the spring. So usually we tell people this is around Halloween um, and that's a really good time. Your plants don't need a lot of supplemental water at that point. Um, it's a holiday, so it's a good uh, prompt to say, ah, aha, I gotta take that timer in. So you can take just the timer in itself. You do not have to take in the pressure regulator or any of the drip tubing that all can remain uh, safely under the mulch. There's no water that sits in the system um, that could freeze or bust the pipes. And, um, and so really the timer is the only part that needs to come in. It's really easy. You are going to simply unscrew this from uh, the, the hose bib and then also unscrew the timer itself from the, um, 
the pressure regulator. Pressure regulator itself can stay out and the um, drip tube that is in the ground can stay out all winter. It's really just the, the timer that needs to come in. When you are ready to reattach your and install your timer in, in the spring, um, simply attach it first to the pressure reg regulator and then um, you're going to want to just come in here and screw it tightly onto your hose bib. Uh, the battery should be good for an entire season. So we usually recommend uh, basically putting a new set of batteries in in the spring when you're setting up your system and they should last you through the fall. If, um, if we've just set up your system, then those batteries are probably good until you're going to take in that timer um, in the fall for the frost. Okay, in order to open the compartment, you just squeeze the tabs on either side of the compartments. You put in two AA batteries. The compartment can only go in one way. If you try to put it in the other way, it will not go in. Click it into place. You're going to turn it around. The automatic light is going to blink and then continue to blink continuously um, throughout the life of the battery indicating that there is power to the timer. The light is going to blink. If you can see sort of uh, on this little diagram here on the front of the timer. Um, if this is double blinking or triple blinking, that indicates that you have low battery. It's best to water your garden every other day as opposed to every 24 hours except for the initial period of time right after insulation. You do want to water really heavy for the first two weeks after insulation to help those plants get established. After that, you can cut the watering time back to every other day or 48 hours, and that gives those plants a time to let the soil dry out a little bit around them, yet keeping it consistently moist. Your watering schedule is going to depend on the time of year that it is and seasonally we're going to have to adjust this timer to different frequencies and different run times. So in early spring, in late fall, we don't need to water as often. We're often getting a lot of natural rainfall. So we recommend in those cooler seasons that you're going to be watering once or twice a week, which comes out to uh, every 72 hours or every three days. So let's set the frequency for spring. We're going to set it to 72 hours. We're going to wait for that automatic light to blink. And then we're going to set the run time to 45 minutes. Again, that automatic light is going to blink to indicate that it is set and ready to go. It's all you need to do. In the summer, we're gonna to wanna to water at a higher frequency. And so we are going to um, move to an every other day frequency. So we're gonna switch that dial to the 48 hours again. Get the confirmation light on the automatic light there confirming that the timer has recorded our schedule. In drought situations in heat waves, we really are going to need to give our plants additional water. So we're going to keep the frequency at every other day because plants like to dry out. It's, it's good to give them an off day, but we are going to increase the run time to 60 minutes. So we could just go ahead and turn that timer dial to 60 minutes and we wait for that light indication. Now, the time then when you would want to um, recommend uh, watering more frequently would be if you have this drip system strictly for containers. So if this timer is watering containers and that's the only thing that is on this drip line, then you can up that watering time because most containers need to be watered every day. Sometimes you need to even water them twice a day. 
So if you have uh, this drip irrigation system to water containers, which a lot of our clients do, uh, sometimes our clients have an extra drip system simply for their containers, uh, then you're gonna want to water that every day, which would be 24 hours. Again, we're waiting for that indication light and probably anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes is good uh, for your containers. All right, so I gave you some suggestions on how long to water, but it's really important that you um, check your plants. So if you've changed your timer to a new setting, uh, after a couple of days, go out there and actually check on how your plants are doing. So the easiest way to do this, you can buy an expensive rain gauge or something like that. But the easiest way is really to use your finger. So you're gonna go to the base of the plant, you're gonna pull the mulch back around sort of that plant. You're gonna stick your finger in the, right in the soil, right there at the, the plant. If you can't get your finger in, it's really hot and dry. Um, the plant may look wilted a little bit, you need to up your watering frequency, either the frequency or the amount of time uh, that, that you're watering. If you put your finger into the soil and it's muddy, like your finger comes out coated in mud, that is probably too much water and you really should cut back either the runtime or the frequency. Or it might be that it, it's, you know, we've had a lot of rain and you actually need to put that timer on a rain delay. Ideally, when you stick that finger into the dirt, that finger is sort of not gonna come out covered with mud, um, but it's gonna be easy to go into the soil. Um, the soil is sort of almost kind of like a brownie. Um, you know, think about it, it's like if you squished it together, it would make a little ball. It's not sopping wet. You're not able to squeeze water out of it. It's just kind of like a great brownie consistency. And so uh, that's the easiest way to monitor. If you have that brownie consistency in your soil, you are watering perfectly. Another way to look to see if your plants are getting um, enough water is just to do a visual assessment of plants. So, um, you know, if your or the leaves are really drooping, if they're crispy and brown, um, that's probably an indication uh, to check the soil that your plant is not getting enough water. On the other hand, um, if you see yellowing of the leaves, and I'm not talking about plants that have a yellowish leaf naturally, sort of talking about normal green plants that you know really should be green and you're seeing a lot of yellow leaves. Uh, this is especially true of hollies, our laurels, um, a lot of the rhododendron, they'll show yellowing of the leaf when they have too much water. Um, Overwatering is actually one of the worst problems that we deal with, um, probably second to not getting enough water. So it's important to get the right ratio and even though the drip irrigation system is there to make watering easier for you, it's just not something that you can set and never think about again. So I hope that was helpful. If you need more help, we're here for you. Feel free to call the office. Um, you can call your sales designer. You can also look um, online. There are a lot of resources to help you further with your drip irrigation timer.